Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about two functions, which are the NPV, net present value, and the XNPV function, which is like an expanded net present value calculation. Let's start with the simple net present value. Well, the idea of net present value in this context is we have, in this case, six cash flows occurring at the end of each period. So here in this case, each year. And we have an underlying interest rate. Our goal now, get the net present value. And we're going to use the corresponding function for this here. So it's NPV. We open this, we directly see what he wants first is the interest rate and then some values. So here I can just select the range of values. I don't have to tell him anything more because he automatically knows those payments, those cash flows occur always at the same time, at the time frame where this is the corresponding interest rate. So we can close this here. We see the net present value of this cash flow. So the value of this cash flow today, so at the beginning here, is 2,864 and something. Now, well, as I said, the problem here is that the cash flows supposedly occur always at the end of this period. However, it could be that cash flows, as is the case here in the right example, occur at differently sized points in time. That the period between two cash flows is differently sized. So here it's just a few months. Here it's more than a year. So whenever you actually want to calculate the net present value and you know exactly when the cash flows occur, you can use the X and PV function. It's only slightly more complex than the NPV function because here we just have to enter three values. First, the interest rate, then as before my values, and in the third part, the corresponding dates on which these six different cash flows occur. So we enter the dates, close this, click OK. Now we see at this point we get a slightly higher net present value because they occur at different points in time. Especially there are five occurring in the first year. That's why it's a bit higher than the one from before. But in the end it can be interpreted in exactly the same way. That's the present value of this set of cash flows. And well, that's already everything there is on using net present value or XNPV to get the present value of a list of cash flows. In this case, I'm just saying goodbye and see you next time.